Hi everyone and welcome to Power Platform Pro. Today we'll be looking at many-to-many -many relationships and how you can use a join table that you create yourself instead of using the out-of-the-box many-to-many relationship option in Dataverse. I'll show you why I think this is a better option and I'll show you how to create a combo box dropdown in the Canvas apps where you can utilize uh, this many-to-many -many join table and patch to it. Let's take a look. Okay, I've got a simple example here. I've got two tables, uh, an orders table, which is just some orders with an ID, and a category table, which is just some categories with a name and an owner. And what I'd like to do is create a many-to-many -many relationship between the orders and the category tables. So one category, gifts, could have many orders associated with it. And one order, footballs, could have many categories associated with it. Um, and I want to be able to build a Canvas app um, to control these orders as well. So out of the box, you can build a relationship here um, and you can make it a many-to-many -many relationship, which is great. So I could do a relationship between orders and uh, category there. But this won't actually create a column for me to use in the Canvas app. Um, and it, what will happen is a, is a separate table will be created in the background of Dataverse that will be able to access um, and that's where all the relationships will be stored and that will be very difficult to work with in Canvas. So instead of doing that, I don't want to have a hidden background table. I want to have a table that I've created and I can, I can control just like a normal table in, in the Canvas app. So I've created a third table which is order category. It's a, it's a join table. I'm going to refer to this as a join table. It's got a column for order and a column for category. So you can see that socks has two different categories, gifts has two different orders. So that's the many to many relationships. And I'm just dashing out the name column because that's a required column, um, but I'm not using it. So I'm just gonna put a dash in every time. So that's the background setup. Now in the app, it does get a little bit complicated. And um, what I've done is I've set up a simple app. So I'll show you how it works first of all. It's basically just, um, create an order, let's call this one golf club, choose a category and save it. And then you can come in and then you can edit the, the record here. So I'll show you how I did this with the drop down box. But what that's essentially doing is it's creating records in, in here. So you'll see I've done the three records for golf clubs, air sports, gifts and household. Sports, gifts and household in the join table. Okay, so how did I set it up? Well, I started on the on start code and I defined three collections here um, that you'll need to use later. So just defining them at the moment using clear collect. Um, We've got call JT remove, JT's join table. So that refers to the order categories table, the join table. So we've got a JT remove, a JT patch collection, and we've got a third collection, which is based on the categories. And that's looking up the categories table as the default values. Um, now in my home screen here, when I click on one of these items, I'm going to set uh, this variable called var selected order to this item. So let's click on socks. And you'll see that it takes me to this screen and it's put in some information here based on the var selected order not being blank. So it's the var selected order dot name, which was socks. There's also some code on the, the on visible of this screen um, and it uses those collections. So we clear some collections, we clear both the join uh, table collections to start with and then we collect up uh, basically 
we look at the join table and we find any order IDs that match our selected order ID and we collect them up in this collection called uh, join table remove. So as you can see here, there's, there's two values in there and that will be basically technology and gifts, the existing join table categories for this order. Um, but that's collected them up as, as join table lines. We need them as um, category rows as well. So this is why we, we now clear a collection called categories and then we loop through that join table collection and we collect up uh, the corresponding um, category. So this contains categories. And yeah, this is going to be the same basically, it's, it's not showing you there, but it's going to be technology and gifts. So we've collected everything up that we need. Um, now on the drop down, we've got the default selected items as called categories because those are um, in the right format. They're the, the technology and gifts from the categories table. And the items property of this is also the categories table. There we go. And obviously this drop down, I've allowed it to be a multi-select drop down. So you can select from the categories table any categories you like, and by default it's putting in the ones from the call categories. And if I had another one, that's fine. Now on the save button, we've got a little bit going on here. Um, the first part is just to update the orders table. So this is just the um, the name essentially. If I jump to the orders table and show you what was in that again. Go to the orders table. It's literally just an ID which is auto-generated and a name. So the first part of this is just to patch the name essentially and it's looking up the selected order and checking if it's blank. Um, if it is blank, then it's a brand new order. And then we can just set a variable to, of the selected order to be this new one that we're patching. So we're patching the orders table with the default values and we're just putting the name in from this box. And that's pretty much it. And then once we've set that variable, I just look it up again to make sure I bring back all of the columns that associate with that variable. Sometimes if you set a variable in this way, and then that's all you do, and um, it doesn't give you all the information about that order. So this is why I do like re kind of reset the variable here with a lookup. So all of this code is for a new order, and that's easy. That's just just the name basically being patched. If it's an existing order then I'm going to look up the, the order that I need to patch and again just, just patch the name over the top. Um, and this second part is just uh, the good for the orders table, which uh, we always need for it to work properly. So essentially, this whole part here is just to patch in the name and then update var selected order to be the most, to, to be the order with that name. This next part is to update the join table and I'm using for all. So I'm going to loop through every selected item in the drop down box. So there's three here. And I'm going to call it selected categories. So each of those three loops is going to be called selected categories. And I'm going to collect up um, this patch collection of the join table where the name is a dash because I never use the name column in the join table. The order is going to be var selected order every time, the current order. Could be the one I've just created or the one that I'm editing. And then the order category is going to be a lookup based on um, the selected categories dot categories. So the, the category technology, the category gifts, the category household, it's going to be looking up each of them in the categories table and then uh, patching it in. So once I've collected it, um, it's just a case of patching that whole collection. 
and that will basically put in these three values. But if it's an existing um, order with these three values already in there, like this one is, uh, we'll end up with six because it's going to, it's already got technology gifts and household in it, and then it's going to put them in again essentially. So that's why I have this last step, which is to remove the previous um, version of technology gifts and households that were in the join table for this order um, that I collected right at the start on the invisible code uh, here. So that just makes sure there's not duplicates basically in, in this join table. And then it's just a case of uh, navigating back. So let's see how it works. Yep. And I'll show you what happens if I take if I don't use that remove code. So just comment that out. It puts it in twice, you see. And then every time I press the button. Puts it in a further time. So that's it. It's fairly complicated, but I think that's the best way to um, to use the the join table um, in a Canvas app. The last thing you might want to do is just visualize the choices that you have, um, like I've done here. And I've done that through a concatenation, um, basically. So here I'm just filtering the join table based on the order ID being this item.id, so the order ID for this item in the gallery socks. And then I'm getting the order category name and then putting a pipe between it um, and using the good cat function just to, to list everyone. And then this, this part here with the left and then the length minus two. That's just to get rid of the last um, pipe at the end so we don't have uh, a pipe and then nothing after it. Or if it's blank, we don't just see the pipe. So yeah, that's it. Good luck.